Hi guys, uh, welcome back to GFFA Games and the Old Republic. Um, we are back in what is pretty much the starting area of Velsavis because we want to continue on with the um, class quests. Anarchy, confront the Imperial Commander. So we did already start the class quests, but we didn't get very far with them. So uh, I will. Oh, I think we just accidentally triggered a guy. Never mind. Um, we will just get a little bit caught up with where we are in the story before we uh, head on. But uh, yeah, we are heading the wrong direction, which is a fantastic start. I mean, let's be honest. Oh no. All right, killer. We'll kill you. I mean, why would you attack a Jedi Knight? Seriously. What is wrong with you? Take that. Right, hop back on our speeder. So we need to be heading in this direction. Don't mind me, you little guys. I'm just going to try and skirt around you. I'm not looking for a fight with you because, well, let's face it, you're pathetic. So it looks like we're heading this way, doesn't it, in here? Is that right? Looks right. Let's check our mission log then. So, Anarchy. Confront the Imperial Commander, an Imperial infiltration team led by Ex-Executor Kranus has freed the prisoners on the Secret Republic prison world of Belsavis. Master Satil Shan instructed you to find Kranus and uncover the Emperor's plot to destroy the planet. Pak Tal Din detonated the ion charges, overloading the power station's energy grid and bringing down its shields. The path is now clear for you to take on Kranus and his Imperials. Defeat the Imperial Commander in the South Power Generator facility in the minimum security section of the prison. Okay. So if you're interested in uh, seeing the first part of the... Uh, class quests on this planet. I think it's in the first video on Belsavis that I've done. First or the second one, I think it's the first one. So uh, that should give you... should allow you to catch up. Okay, we actually don't want to be in here, so let's come out. Where do we need to go then? How do you get up? Up here. Oh, we've got to follow this path. We've come completely the wrong way. I'm sorry about this. We're going to head back. But can we fast travel back? Would that help? Probably, yes. We've come completely the wrong way. Honestly. You know what that is, don't you? That's just me being stupid. We basically want to follow this coastline by the looks of it. Don't know what that was that it just said. Is it through this cave here? No, up here. Here we are. We found a path that we haven't followed before. And I think we're heading the right way now. I do apologise wasn't uh, my intention to mislead us. In fact, it was my intention to try and get uh, as much of this done as I could today, so uh, I kind of failed that, haven't I? I know the last episode was quite a long one, but the last uh, few missions in that uh, in the uh, planetary quests were really cool, so that's why uh, I wanted to continue playing. I've actually continued on from my last session uh, with this video, um, so I'm a little bit uh, knackered in a way, but I'm not going to try and let that stop me. Try and avoid too many conflicts. Oh, nope. We did not uh, avoid that very well. Thankfully, these guys are fairly straightforward to kill. 
Didn't realize those droids exploded, but never mind. Don't think uh, I'm gonna put up too much of a, uh, a fight. So I'm assuming we're heading the right way. Yes, in here. Oh, it's a story area. Okay. Relatively big area, but no mind. Yeah, so on some planets, the class quests are fairly short, and on some planets, they go on for ages, and the planetary quests are fairly short. So this planet, the planetary quests, felt fairly short to me. So I'm assuming the planet, the uh, class quests that we're doing now are going to be uh, quite long. They might have felt short because I was enjoying them. That might be the reason. Whereas most of the time the planetary quests are a bit... Like filler content, a bit boring. But uh, we'll see. You know we're going to play it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I don't think there's many uh, planets in this chapter. We're on chapter 3, uh, which is the final chapter of the origin story. I th genuinely think there's only this and uh, a couple of other planets to do. Whether or not there's more that... Uh, In between those planets, I don't know. I'm kind of looking forward to getting this story done so we can uh, get on with something else like KOTOR. I really want to play KOTOR, uh, but I don't want to confuse myself by trying to do too much at once. You know, I'd rather play this game, give it as much attention as I can, uh, and then move on to KOTOR before coming back to this. Uh, later on after I've done you know, whatever else I want to do to play a Sith storyline I think I am just going to play the Sith Warrior though uh, a friend of mine recommended I play the other kind of Sith for a different kind of uh, experience but I don't know we'll see I'd like to play all the different classes, but I just can't can't see myself uh, having time to do that before the game eventually gets pulled. Because you know it's not going to last forever. This game, let's be honest. It'd be nice if it would, but it's an MMO, and I think as soon as they want to do another Star Wars MMO, or the player, you know, they stop earning so much money from it. It'll just disappear. It won't be worth them keeping the servers online and keeping supporting it. So hopefully there'll be a few more years left in it. I mean, games like World of Warcraft have lasted years and years and years. I don't know how. I've been expecting you, the fool who defied the Emperor's glorious will. Do you even understand what you threw away when you turned against him? Do you realize what others would give to serve his bidding? I never thought to ask if the pure-blood Sith leading the assault team was male. You were expecting Kranis? He has business elsewhere. Colonel Harris, status report. The reactor is offline and this area is sealed, Executor. The Jedi is here. Our distraction worked perfectly. You did all this just to trap me? The chaos Colonel Harith unleashed purchased the time I required to complete my mission. Soon, all life on this world will be destroyed. You, me, Kranus, all of us sacrificed for the Emperor's glory. He will become immortal, all-powerful. He will raise up all those who served with true devotion, and together we will rule the galaxy. The Emperor can't bring you back to life. The dark side only brings destruction. You refuse to see the truth. I don't have to defeat you. Just slow you down. You've lost. 
We will meet again at the Empress' side, my love. Let death take us all. Okay. So these are pure blood Sith, and if you haven't read uh, some of the like uh, expanded universe lore about the Sith, they were a planet that got dominated by fallen Jedi, if I remember rightly. So, um, it was in the uh, Golden Age of the Sith, the comic book series, that they first appeared. Well, this uh, woman's taking some killing, isn't she? I wish she'd come off a banister. I don't know why she's stood up there. I don't seem to be making any impact on her whatsoever, do I? Why is that, I wonder? Well, there we go. Plenty of guys jumping down. Can't see the force pusher. I wonder if this game's bugged a little bit here. I just don't seem to be able to. Uh... Oh, I'm not getting a. There we go. Hmm. That seemed unusual. Kill these guys. Now we've got to use the uh, console. Let's get this up and running again. Thank you for slaying Colonel Harith. Her death at your hand has surely marked her as one of the chosen. She will receive a place of honor when the Emperor grants us eternal life. The Emperor will never complete his ritual. Not as long as I'm alive. This delay has cost you. Now you cannot stop what is to come. The Emperor's will is inevitable. Pak, come in. Executor Kranus isn't here. He's already gone deeper into the prison. Maybe we can track him using the prison surveillance system. Let me see what I can cook up. Republic reinforcements are finally on their way to secure that generator. Head back to my position. I'll start searching for Kranis. So that's interesting because um, she, the uh, the Sith commander, called him Executor, and um, the other guy called him Executor. And you have to think this is what the uh, Darth Vader's Star Destroyer is called, right? And I always called it Executor, until someone pointed out to me that that's not a word. <laughs> it's Executor. The word you're thinking of is Executioner. Um, yeah. So uh, she's wrong, and Executor's right. I'm picking a lot to chatter on the comm network. Here, listen to this. Alert. This is Dr. Gantrell. Our sector is overrun. We've taken refuge inside one of the unused containment vaults. This is the only distress call we can send. Can't risk those blood skin fiends tracking our signal. Dr. Gantrell, out. What does Dr. Gantrell do for the prison? Is he a medic? No, a scientist. Dr. Gantrell and his team were working in the high security wing. Clearance way beyond my position. They all have subdermal tracking chips, so the Republic can locate them in an emergency. Dr. Gantrell must have figured we'd use the chips to find which vault they're hiding in. Sounds like that isn't an option anymore. The Imperials disabled all the monitoring stations, but if you repair them, I can pinpoint Dr. Gantrell's location. I want to find him before Kranis does. 
We still don't know the Imperials plan to destroy Bell Savas, but there must be a reason he's after Dr. Gantrell. Call me when you get the monitoring stations up and running. I'll use them to locate the doctor. Right, monitoring stations. So that's uh, a common mission, isn't it? Oh, right, okay. We can use the speeder. Let's do it. Thank you. So I think we've already been to a lot of these areas that we're going to be going to. Be interesting to see. We were, um, we were going to play this slightly differently. We were going to try and do an area at a time, both the planetary quests and then the uh, story quests, but. That didn't seem to work out very well. Well, as you can see, we're back here, which, you know, a place we've already been. So, uh, without really knowing how these stories are going to play out, it's difficult to really do that. But monitoring station, and then there's monitoring stations up there as well. Okay, let's go and get this one then first. Down here? No. Just outside somewhere, right? Uh, this way? Yeah. Keep going. Okay. Yeah, so we've already done quite a bit in this area. And it would have been nice to have been able to have done the class quests at the same time, but. Following the storylines, doing that gets a little confusing. So I haven't yet worked out a really good way of playing each planet. Uh, the best way that I've found really is just to do them. Uh, planetary quests and then story quests. I know it can be a little frustrating, boring doing it that way because you're not really getting prime story content from the planetary quests but uh, in terms of this planet actually you got much better content doing it that way uh, than probably what we're going to get from the story because you know it dealt with uh, the Rakata and uh, is it the Rakata? I can't remember now oh, the builders whatever they were called There's two very similar sounding aliens in this uh, planet. You've got the guys that were like Assage Ventress, uh, but I think they were Rata, Rata, Rata Attack. Is that a thing? Is that a, a, a Pokemon? Oh, honestly. There are days where my brain just stops working. But then there's the builders of the Infinite Empire. What were they called? I want to say Rakata. Oh. Hello, why can't I? Is this not what I want? I'm not eligible. I thought I wanted that. It must be up here. How do I get up there? Is there a way up? Yeah, some stairs here, look. Oh, I think this is that uh, Elter Skelter we looked at before and thought was looked pretty cool. Hi guys, Tilda. How you doing? Oh, this was what we're looking for. Oh. Are you seriously telling me that none of these guys could have pressed that button? You absolute wastes of space. No offense. Let's go. We want to head up here now, I think. I think this mission is going to be quite annoying in the fact that it's just driving around pushing buttons. Hopefully there's a little bit more to it. This is 
kind of what I expect from the planetary quest, really, just busy work, filler work, and I know you have to expect that from an MMO, or any kind of RPG, because the planets are so vast, you know, the, the maps, that they have to fill it with stuff to, to kind of build the world a little bit and get you to explore, but, I don't know, to my mind, there's more, more interesting ways to do that than this, surely. I think I'm going the right way. Yeah, the Ratataki, they're the uh, Assage Ventress guys. So you got the Rakatans, and then you got the Ratataki. Rat attack, yeah, that's it. So, what's the Pokemon called? Or is there a Pokemon? I don't know, honestly. I don't. I never really understood Pokemon. I never really played it. So, uh, my apologies if my words offend. I was a bit old for Pokemon. I was told the guy I was a bit too old for Pokemon. It turned out he was the same age as me, and got quite offended because he was really into it. <laughs> but never mind. I was probably 12, 13 when Pokemon was really popular. And yeah, it didn't do anything for me. I tried watching the cartoon, but I just didn't understand it. I loved the idea of the video game, like walking around a world and that kind of thing, but. Uh, yeah, I never had a Game Boy when I was little, so I never played it. I just, it just completely went past, past me, Pokemon. Completely. I remember a friend of mine was like, Digimon are better, man. And, uh, well, were they? I don't know. And then, uh, probably about ten years ago, Another friend of mine was talking about Pokemon, and I said, oh, uh, yeah, I remember Digimon, are they still going? And then some guy who I didn't really know, but was like a, uh, a friend of a friend chimed in and was like, yes, and then gave me like this explanation of what was currently going on in the Digimon universe. And, well, oh, I didn't really care. Hop on this lift. But yeah, that's my story. <laughs> Not the most interesting. But, uh, okay, so it's, well, I've got two. Oh, because we've got another one to do, haven't we, after this? Oh, getting a bit of slowdown. Not quite sure why that is. I still remember the theme tune to Digimon. And obviously I still remember the theme tune to Pokemon, so I must have watched it, you know quite a bit but I just never I never got into it I just it feel, felt like such a complete waste of money to me buying cards I've never really liked card games so I had some of the Star Wars um, collectible card game and me and a friend of mine at the time tried to play it and I think I was Admiral Akbar with a blaster on Hoth trying to defend a shield generator. At least I think I was on Hoth. We might have just invented that part because there was a shield generator. And then my friend was a TIE fighter. That's like the, the, the random storyline the card game kind of gave us. And I just thought, this is just ridiculous. This is just stupid. What are we actually doing? So yeah, I never played that again. And it kind of put me off card games in general, I think. Maybe I was playing it wrong. I did enjoy the uh, Star Wars miniatures game. Not the West End Games one, I've never played that. But the... Um, uh, 
was it Wizards of the Coast that did it? The pre-painted one. That was quite fun. But at the same time, it wasn't uh, very well designed. We kind of, I know me and my uh, brother, we had to kind of redesign the rules a little bit. The lightsaber combat was awful. You know, it was just not fun. You just stood next to each other and hit each other with lightsabers until one of you died. I mean, it just wasn't anything to it. It wasn't very cinematic, so we kind of adapted the rules a little bit to make it more... Um, more dynamic, I should say. So you weren't just stood in one place fighting. You were kind of moving around the battlefield. And, uh, I think we adapted it from the Lord of the Rings uh, miniatures game from Games Workshop, which was around about the same time. In that game, when you won a close combat, you um, forced the enemy back a little bit. So... It meant that uh, the next time you were in combat, you were in a different place, you know? And then it gave the opponent, oh, come on, the opportunity to either re-engage in their turn or to run away and fire at you or use a force power. Or... It just made it a lot more dynamic, which um, in the original rules, if I remember rightly, you'd have to break away from combat in order to do that. And you'd be stupid to do that because it gave the opponent an opportunity to attack. So that's that was the little adaptation that we made. I'm sorry if that was an extremely boring uh, explanation of it, but <laughs> it is what it is. Let's get out of here. Where are we going? What? Oh, we had a bonus that we didn't do. I'm sorry. We've got to kill three assassins. I didn't realise that. Don't mind me, guys. I'm coming back. Don't shoot at me, please. No, I said don't shoot at me. Thank you. Oh, crap. Oh, well. So where are them assassins? There's an intruder. Intruder. I'll we'll have to kill you, sorry. Didn't realise we had a bonus on at the same time. Never mind. It wasn't a big area. So I haven't played much Legion. I do enjoy play, uh, painting up the miniatures, but I haven't played the game a whole lot. So whether that uh, does um, lightsaber combat a little better, I don't know. Uh, I would be interested to find out. I don't think you could do a miniatures game based purely on lightsaber combat. I think that would be quite boring. You know, duels and things. But having a duel within a, a wider context of a, uh, a game I think would work quite well which is what they've done I think every single time they've done a miniatures game so is there another assassin around here somewhere maybe in here oh, that was a chest No assassins in here. Uh, maybe I have to wait for one to respawn. Oh yes, there he is. Hey, buddy. Just got to kill you to get me bonus. Is that all right? What's this thing? Oh, return to the entrance. Oh, we can do that. I've noticed we had one of these before, didn't we? We said it was such a good idea, but we hadn't noticed them uh, on any of the others. Do they have them in all of these instances? And I just don't notice them. Because it is such a good idea to be able to just return, but I'd like it to be more obvious where it is. Oh, 
There we go. Bonus done. Let's go. Hop back on our speeder and get out. Oh, on the wrong way. And they've done some more uh, miniatures games. There's one called. Sh oh, come on. There's one called Shatterpoint, which I've not. Uh, really looked into it. It looks very cartoony. I think it's based on the Clone Wars cartoon, which is probably why. But, uh, yeah. I'm not sure I'll... Uh, that's going to interest me much. The, there was one um, a while ago that looked really cool. Um, I can't... I don't know what the actual game was like, but it had... Uh, Who am I fighting? Oh, this guy. I got a Kirkanos miniature from it. So, uh, you know, you had to paint it. Imperial Assault, I think it was called. Something like that. And that was interesting because it actually had Expanded Universe characters involved. Like the first X-Wing game did. So it kind of existed in this uh, parallel universe where canon and... Uh, legends kind of coexisted so uh, you had Dash Rendar and Cal Katarn and things uh, in the cards I'm pretty sure you did on the uh, X-Wing that was so yeah quite exciting I guess that was probably around the time where they didn't really know what they were doing with uh, continuity Yeah, I'm kind of at a, a bit of a crossroads, really. I don't know what I would prefer, have preferred Disney to have done when they bought Star Wars. Obviously, my main preference is, but they actually, think about it. If George Lucas had continued owning Star Wars, we'd have had detours and that kind of thing, which just, I have to admit, doesn't interest me at all. No, what he was, well, not what he was doing, but what he was, I suppose, allowing the licensing to do, to me, felt kind of wrong, you know? He got to the point where he clearly just didn't care anymore, you know? It was like, I built this thing, I wanted my kids to take it, but they're not that interested, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'll sell it, which I think he regretted it. You know, I know it's very difficult to say what somebody else uh, feels about something, but I think he'd still love to be telling his own stories rather than uh, letting other people do it. I might be wrong. That's my interpretation. It's like we're going down here, doesn't it? This is the primary monitoring station. Can I uh, mount? No. Hey guys, Brex Stew, how's he doing? He cleared it out for us now. There's plenty of people down here. So where actually we're heading to? Straight down, okay. But yeah, Star Wars was kind of getting a bit static uh, under uh, George Lucas because he didn't seem to have much of an interest in it. The Clone Wars didn't really interest me and I think that was kind of winding up anyway. So... What was the? It was just books and comics, which... Well... <laughs> I enjoyed them, but I wasn't really up to date on the novels. The comic books I kind of was, but you know, I was kind of falling out of Star Wars at that time and it was the Disney purchase that really brought me back in. Originally I thought, oh crap, I'm going to get caught up with all my expanded universe now, 
And then I thought, you know what? No, I'm going to start at the ground floor and keep up with uh, this new continuity. But, well, we all know how that went. <laughs> it just wasn't good. So, uh, I, yeah, I don't know what, honestly. Would I have preferred Disney to have continued the expanded universe? Would I have, would I have preferred George Lucas to have uh, kept ownership of Star Wars and kept kind of licensing it out to all these third parties to do what they wanted with it? Or would I have preferred Disney to have purchased it and uh, done something different? I don't know. I really don't. I think we're at a point really where I can say uh, I would really prefer just to archive stuff, you know, to respect its legacy and make sure this stuff's out there, it's available. Like, um, I don't know, I don't know. Is the new stuff popular? I don't know. I just, I really struggle to see how they make the decisions that they make. It's got to be popular. Are we getting through these prisoners all right? Have you guys respawned or? What if that other guy killed a load of people, which is why it's felt a bit empty when we walked in here. We're certainly killing a lot of people in here. We need to kill 16 rat attacky prisoners, but uh, we've got four left to kill. Okay, two left to kill. Load over here. Oh, the next to the monitoring station as well. Oh, there's another thing for taking us back to the phase entrance. That's really weird, isn't it? How we're suddenly noticing those. It's like they remembered to put them in on some of them, but not all of them. Whoever designed this planet clearly thought they were necessary. Or at least this portion of the planet, because I've not noticed it on any of the other phases uh, in anything else we've done on this planet. Perhaps I'm just an idiot. I don't know. Right. Last monitoring station. Monitoring stations. Locate Dr. Gantrell. On it. Scanning now. Found his tracking signal. He and his team are in an underground containment vault. Sending you the coordinates now. I hope you get there before Kranis. Right. Okay. Let's use this thing and get out of here. Could have killed these two. Uh... Nasty beasts. Well, one's already dead. There we go. Let's go. Right, so where do we need to go next? Uh up that way. Okay. Hop on our little speeder, see if we can get out of here without causing too much confusion. Where actually is the exit? Can't get out that way. 
have to go straight across the middle, I think. I was hoping not to engage all these people, but I think I might have to. Let's see. Nope. Yep. <laughs> I was thinking of... Uh, Playing through some of the Star Wars games, like I was saying in the last video, X-Wing being probably the first one, and coming up with a a rating system, which is a bit more in-depth than just, oh, 4 out of 10, you know, as people do. Uh, a bit more complex than that, and then being able to sort of make a, 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 a countdown, I guess, of the, the what I think are the best Star Wars games because um, I think that'd be fun, you know, to say, okay, well, rate games on story content, graphics, and things like that, you know, just what you'd normally expect a game to be rated on, but more in depth because I think with Star Wars, there's a lot of. Um, of a lot of things that you might rate a game that you wouldn't rate a normal game on. So you'd have to kind of do it in context of when they were released as well. So you can say how much does it uh, add to the uh, the lore? How much does it advance things? How much does it build upon things? You know, it's, there's a lot of really interesting things you could talk about and uh, try and come up with a way to, to quantify it as a, a, a rating probably out of 100. And I was thinking, could you start with a base? You know, everything starts with 5 out of 10. All of the different um, aspects that we're rating. And, for example, like, you could say cutscenes. Everything starts with 5 out of 10, but you could say, well, there aren't any cutscenes. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to deduct points from this because there aren't any cutscenes. However... In context of when the game was released, games didn't have cutscenes, so you, it'd be unfair to deduct from it. So you just, you know, leave it at five. That kind of thing. I don't know. I'd have to think about it how it would work. Maybe a base would be zero, but it seems unfair to like give a game zero out of ten for something that uh, they wouldn't normally have. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Music as well, like... Uh, a lot of the early games just use Red Book Audio. Well, I say early, I mean like the, the mid to late 90s. Up to the 2000s actually just used, you know, the Star Wars themes. It just played on like a, as though you were listening to them on a CD. Which is great, but... Uh, earlier than that, they had the iMuse system, which responded to events in game is that not better what the hell okay so we've got more recarting guys but we're heading this way for our story it doesn't look like there are any recarting guys imperial fanatics oh wow there's loads of imperial fanatics in here Can't help but feel I'd rather be uh, fighting the Rakatan, you know, uh, what the, the Eshkar that we were fighting previously, and uncovering more about the Rakatan stuff because that was fascinating. Whereas, I don't know, this storyline. I'm not quite sure how many missions there are. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look that up when I finish this video because we have been playing for 45 minutes now, so. Uh, once I've finished, I think I'll look to see how many missions we've got left and kind of plan out the uh, the rest of the videos on Belsarvis based upon that. I don't want to be, um, you know, making three hour videos again like I did on Hoth because that wasn't fun for me. And I don't think it was a particularly fun video to watch. So, uh, yeah, let's not do that again. I think last episode was alright. That was about an hour and a half. 
I haven't edited it as I but as I'm recording this because I just continue straight on. But I think that'll be fine because I I was enjoying playing those missions. So I think hopefully that came through in the video and made for an interesting uh, experience. I don't know. We'll see. Well, service enforcer. I like the way these guys are running up to prevent us from. Uh, continuing, they're not just standing around. I think that makes it a bit more dynamic, a bit more interesting to look at. So far, this planet has been quite well designed. The missions, I have to admit. Obviously, there's still some filler missions like that last one, but overall, it's been quite an exciting experience, and I'm looking forward to seeing where the story is going because there isn't, there aren't many planets in Chapter Three. There really aren't. As far as I'm aware, after this planet we go to Voss, then there's a story flashpoint, and then we go to the finale planet for, um, I think it's Corellia. I might be wrong. Oh, looks like we're going to have to talk to somebody. You're fast, but not fast enough. Executor Kranos is gone. <whistles> you blessed Colonel Harith with a glorious death. We are grateful. I guess Kranos infected his entire squad with this madness. You mock what you do not understand. Like the Emperor, we draw power from the suffering and death of others. These scientists are not hostages. They are fuel to feed us as we strike you down. Okie dokie. Interesting that he pronounced it Executor again. So, uh, clearly they didn't have uh, a very involved um, team directing the voice actors. Because you think that would be something that they'd be picking up on and saying... You know, having a pronunciation guide for characters and uh, just I have noticed in the past some of the characters uh, pronounce names wrong you know actual names and things so it is interesting how they record voices in this I'm guessing they don't have them all in one um, place you know you won't go to a studio they probably just record them at studios all over the world where the actors live. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, let's speak what this scientist has to say. If you hadn't come here, we owe you our lives. That was amazing. Outnumbered, outgunned, but those Imperials never stood a chance. Pack, how did you see that? Saw the whole fight in the security hall. Pretty incredible. I've seen some good fights. I wish they would have surrendered. But Kranus's troops are determined to fight to the death. Kranus is what the Imperials call their leader. He took Dr. Gantrell. Took him? His tracking chip says he's right there. The Sith carved it out of the Doctor's skin and threw it in the corner. He screamed the whole time. Do you know where they were headed? The Imperials demanded access to the prison's power core, but those levels are sealed. There's only one key to the core, and we secure it inside the main research vault. Only Dr. Gantrell can open it. Give me the location. Wait. There's more. Our team created a number of advanced warfare prototypes by combining Republic and alien technology. When the Empire attacked, we hid the weapons in one of the vaults near the Republic settlement. If the prisoners find them... I think I can spare a few minutes to keep deadly weapons out of criminal hands. You'll be saving thousands of people. You're a Jedi. You can't turn your back on this. Pack is right. I can't let good men and women die. You can secure the prototypes and still catch up with Kranis. I know it. Right, so, I didn't notice one of those handy 
go back to the surface um, devices around here. So let's see where we need to go next. Oh. Is that the way we came in? I don't think it is. Can we mount in here? We can't mount in here, so let's run. I don't really want to fast travel, so I'm not quite sure where. Take us through that way. Okay. Hmm. Let's go. We're going to get to the next objective where we need to be, and then we'll call it a day. I'm just curious where actually we're going to go. Yeah, it's the way we came in, isn't it? Because this is the uh, entrance to the story area. That other way that looks pretty cool, but we're not allowed in. Can we get around these guys? Looks like it. Still can't mount, okay. There we go. Right, so let's get out of here. You know, I didn't really like the design of this planet much when I first got here, but I have to admit it has grown on me. Um, I do think it's a little bit too confusing in places, but uh, and a lot of the areas kind of look very similar. Well, it does have some variety, which is interesting. Certainly a lot of uh, species and creatures on the planet, which I think works quite well. Looks like we want to be heading this way, doesn't it? Yeah, I do find it quite a confusing planet to navigate around. Uh, more so when we were trying to find something a few episodes ago. Where it wasn't clear which way you have to... Well, I suppose I had it the same uh, at the beginning of this uh, video. <laughs> went completely the wrong direction. And you might say, well, that, you know, it's your fault. You're an idiot. But, um, yeah... Looks like we want to be heading... Is it down here? Or is it down here? Yes. Secure the prototype vault. Right, so... I think we're going to call it a day there, and I think we're going to do this next episode. So, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs>